Okay, so what I'm not gonna tell you in this video is to power off your VMs or build smarter VMs or optimize your workloads or any of those generic Azure Virtual Desktop tips because you can find that anywhere else on the internet. What I am gonna share with you is an AVD feature most people aren't even aware of. So the feature that none of you really know about is auto scale. No, 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 not, not that auto scale, this auto scale. Now don't get me wrong, the OG auto scale was great. It would start and stop your VMs according to a schedule while making sure that you had enough hosts online to meet your capacity needs at any time throughout the day. And it could even switch your pool's load balancer to make AVD more efficient. But this new auto scale is different. This guy can dynamically create and delete your VMs, which means you only pay for the resources that you actually need. And that also means no maintaining idle VMs, no ongoing costs for your disk when you aren't using them, enhanced flexibility to precisely build and delete VMs on demand, eliminating the need to provision everything up front. And the coolest of all, this is guaranteeing that every VM is built from the latest version of your image every time, which all gives you an unparalleled efficiency and cost effectiveness and is a real game changer. So let's get you set up. Now to make this work, we're gonna need a few things. First, you're gonna need a new kind of host pool that's using a new host configuration management approach. Then you're gonna need an Azure Key Vault that's gonna store your local admin and domain credentials. And you're gonna need a virtual network to build everything on. And to make all of this go, we're gonna need some permissions. Now I've already done a video covering the new host and configuration build with all of its permissions and I'll link to that at the end because that's a whole lot to cover. In this video, we'll just focus on what dynamic auto scale needs. And that starts by going to your subscription and up to access control. Add a new permission and search for power on off. Select this role and then click next. Click here to add your members and you'll want to search for Azure Virtual Desktop. And your ID should look like that. Once that's done, repeat those steps for the desktop virtualization virtual machine contributor as well. With the permissions done and your new host pool set up, go back to the AVD portal. Here we want to go to the scaling plans and create a new one. Pick the same subscription, resource group, and location where your host pool is, then give it a name and scroll down. Pick your time zone and then we have our scaling methods. Power management is the OG scaling plan but today you should pick the new dynamic auto scaling. As for the pool type, dynamic scaling only works with pooled host pools for now. And the exclusion tag works the same way that they always have. You can set an Azure tag on your VM and when the scaling plan sees that tag, it'll ignore that VM completely. Click next, and we wanna add a schedule. This is where we set the auto scale behaviors. And it already has a name and the normal workday selected. So now let's work from the bottom up. You have the min and max numbers of hosts that you want in your pool. And how many users exactly will this support? Well, to know that, you'd have to jump back to your host pool, go to the properties and scroll down. And at the bottom here, you have your max session limit. And that's the number of users that can be signed into a single VM at a time. So if you have 200 users that need to use this pool and you allow 20 users to use one VM at the same time, your max session should be 10. And your min should be less than 10. Now exactly how much at any point in time will depend on your work schedules and how many users need to sign in after hours. So I'll set this to one. Now the ramp up tab is when you have your morning logon storms. We have breath first as our load balancer, which means that as many hosts will be online as possible so nobody has to be waiting for any connections. And I'm just using the min max that we had from the last page, so let's click next. Now the peak hours is after the logon storm. Our load balancer type switches to depth first, and that means any new users will get stacked onto VM1 until that reaches its full capacity before anybody is allowed to log on to VM2. And the general idea here is that as people sign out of the environments, we'll get VMs that are all freed up and they can be decommissioned. So you have fewer VMs running and they're all stacked onto the smallest number of VMs possible, which is a good time to remember your GPO and Intune policies that limit how long idle users can remain signed in before they're disconnected and how long they can be disconnected before they're forcibly logged off. On the ramp down, we've reached the end of our day. We're still on depth first, 
and we have a capacity threshold. That's the percent of used pool capacity for Autoscale to evaluate if a VM should be cleaned up. Now, if those users aren't signing out on their own, you do have the power here to force them out, but use your power wisely. Give them a time limit and a console message, letting them know what's going on so they can save their work and sign out properly. And at the bottom, we have the same numbers that we had before. So if you need to make a change here, now's the time. Click next. And then we have after hours. And this is all similar to the other tabs that we've already looked at. So finish your schedule and you can add multiple schedules if you like. But remember, you can't have more than one schedule for any day of the week. Click next, and then you can select your pool from the dropdown and make sure that enable auto scale is ticked and click next. Add your tags as all Azure experts do, and then create. Now, jumping back to our resource group where all of our AVD stuff is located, there's our dynamic scaling plan and it's already started to build our VM. And then just a minute or so, that'll be registered with our pool and ready to accept connections. So you can just open your Windows app, sign in and then launch your session and you're good to go. Now, once your hosts have reached their capacity thresholds, new VMs will get created and added into your pool. And as those users finish what they're doing and sign out, your schedule will kick in again and those VMs will be decommissioned or added to the pool as your schedule determines. So what happens with the VMs that are there according to your schedule and your min max numbers, but you don't have any active users using them? Well, those VMs are going to be deallocated to save you money. You're still paying for the underlying storage because the VMs are present, but the VMs themselves powered off when not needed. So you should also enable start VM on connect so that those guys can be powered back on when the users want them. So next you should watch this video to learn everything about how to set up that new host pool configuration because it's going to change everything. Happy learning.